welcome to the podcast, Supporting All of Us Through COVID-19. My name is Dr. Christine Day, and with me is Dr. Mark Cronwell from the Greater Essex County District School Board. Hello to everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we've put together a podcast to help families through what is a very difficult time for many of us as a result of the coronavirus. We're hoping to give you some ideas today of ways we can talk to and support our children through this challenging time. So where do we start when talking to our kids? At the end of February, the National Association of School Psychologists and the National Association of School Nurses put out a parent resource outlining how to talk to children about coronavirus. We'd like to discuss and highlight some of those suggestions. So as we reviewed the articles, uh, we just we looked at as parents, one of the most important things that we need to do is to start by modeling calm behaviors. If we show high levels of, of anxiety to our kids, our children are going to pick up on it and they will become anxious themselves. Our kids are very sensitive to picking up anxiety uh, in parents. Yeah, that's definitely the case. However, we do also want to acknowledge that this is a very scary time. We need as parents to accept that. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world at the moment and we're anxious about job losses and businesses shutting down. Uh, and it's very difficult for us to know where this ends. But we need to try our best to make sure our kids don't pick up on our, our fears and our anxieties and to try to role model normality as best we can to our children. So for example, if we're going to discuss uh, with our partners or our friends the future and the challenges that we're facing, it's a good idea to do that when our children aren't around. We don't want to increase their fear and their panic. Right, but we do need to explain to our children what is happening. And I think the way that we'll talk to our children will differ a little bit depending on how old they are and what their ability to understand what is going on is, along with how anxious you may already sense them to be about this situation. So sometimes we assume that children are having the same fears, they're interpreting the situation the same way as we are, and that's really not always the case. We have to remember for each child that each child is an individual and how they're interpreting or understanding the situation may be very different. And we know some children may be really anxious about the situation where others may not be anxious at all. So it's really important to take direction from each child about how much they want to talk about the situation. Often our younger children won't know as much about the situation or haven't heard as much about it. So they may have uh, more questions that you need to answer at that level. Our teenagers will often have more questions because they've been exposed to more knowledge and they're also more likely to have more misinformation or information that isn't correct. And the other thing I think is really important is often when a child asks us a question, if we don't know the answer, in this situation, it's okay to say we don't know the answer, right? But what we can do as a parent is say, I will try and find out an answer for you by seeking out information from reliable and, and pretty well-trusted sources so that we can get back to you to answer that question. Absolutely. Um, and regardless of anxiety level, all children need to know about what to do about the coronavirus. They need to know about hygiene, about washing your hands, coughing or sneezing into your elbow, and social distancing, such as staying six feet or one meter away from people. And they also need to know why we may not be able to see friends and relatives, why we may be uh, not able to go give grandma a hug. It's hard for young children to learn some of these new behaviors, and it may take a lot of patience and a lot of repetition of this information. Yes, that's really important to give children things that they can do about the virus and ways they can help so they feel some sense of control. When a child or an adolescent or us as adults as well feel that we have some control in a situation that does seem to lessen or help us deal with that anxiety we're feeling. Right. So let's get into some more uh, specific details from the article. So their first suggestion is to remain calm and assuring. And I know I've already said that, but that really is very key in this situation. If it's true 
You can reassure your child that they and their family are fine and try to remind them that you and other adults in their life are there to keep them safe and healthy. Let them talk about their feelings. When appropriate, reframe any worries that seem out of proportion. And you can always get good information from trusted sources to help you be prepared to have those conversations. That's right. Uh, The next point there is just to make yourself available. It's difficult for many of us to work and homeschool at the same time. And children may need extra attention and more time to talk during this time. And if you know you're working uh, and you just can't talk at the time that they want to, set a time aside when you can. You can mark it down on a chart or a calendar in a very visual way with a time so that the child can see that their concerns and questions will be listened to. Um, And also when we have very young children, they may not really verbally communicate how they're feeling at all, but you may see that communication coming out in play. So you may see in play themes of illness, uh, themes of isolation may come up, and this is normal. And it's just a, a way that children process and deal with their anxiety. It's also really important at this time to monitor television viewing and social media. And that really applies to both you as the parent and also your child. Try to avoid watching or listening to information that might be upsetting when your child is around. Give your child facts and correct any inaccurate information they may have discovered or or they're uh, talking about with you. Remember that information appropriate for adults may be confusing or provoke anxiety in young children. So many years ago, uh, when to, uh, in 2001, uh, I was seeing a child uh, privately in, in, a, in a clinic that I worked in, uh, and the child suddenly presented with a great deal of anxiety. Uh, and in talking with the adults, the parents, they weren't sure why. They didn't think anything had changed a lot in the house. Um, but when I sat down with the child, the child said, I'm really anxious because my parents spend almost all day watching TV and they were watching uh, CNN in this case. Uh, and I can't get those visions of the planes crashing into the buildings out of my mind. So the parents weren't thinking to the degree to which being exposed to that was impacting that child and that that's what we want to avoid we want to avoid and monitor our own social media or tv news viewing and we also want to make sure for as many more of our children have mobile devices like ipads and phones that we also have to make sure we're tracking what they're watching uh, or viewing on those devices in case that could be increasing their anxiety as well yeah that's right Um, Maintaining a normal routine can also help reduce anxiety. So you can encourage your your child, your children to keep up with their schoolwork and also to exercise. Lots of exercise helps to reduce anxiety. And if you can get outside, uh, even if it's just in your backyard, that can be a real mood booster as well. Uh, Other things, if you're trying to get creative with with the schooling and, and the home schedule, is that you can incorporate life skills into your routine, like baking, laundry, dishes. That can all be part of homeschooling as well. Uh, Board games are also a great way to learn. And another thing is just to try to keep your child's social interaction going as best as possible through things like face-to-face talking, using technology, or phone calls. They can feel real isolated from their friends and families, and it's just important to try to keep up that connection. Right. And one of the most important things that we need to do as parents is to be honest about the coronavirus. Without facts, our children can imagine situations that are worse than they really are. So don't ignore their concerns, but explain that right now, very few people in Windsor, Essex County are sick with coronavirus. Children can be told that the disease is thought to spread through close contact when an infected person coughs or sneezes, or we may touch something that they've touched prior to us. And it's also thought to spread when you touch an infective surface or object, like I just said, which is why it's important to protect yourself and to use many of those procedures we talked about before in terms of washing your hands and those things so we can make that uh, very important for the kids to understand. Yeah, and it's really important to review and model those basic hygiene practices and health practices for protection. Uh, You can encourage your child to practice the steps to prevent the spread of illness. Uh, They can wash their 
hands for 20 seconds in warm water with soap. Uh, you can teach them to cough or sneeze into the bend of their elbow, not to share food or drinks, to give elbow bumps instead of handshakes, and just to keep encouraging your child to eat a balanced diet, to get enough sleep, and to exercise regularly. And that will help them really develop a strong immune system to fight off illness. Please visit our website at publicboard.ca. The publicboard.ca will have a link to other podcasts that will be uh, completed to assist parents and teachers and students. And if your child is having difficulties as a result of anxiety or they really seem to be stressed related about the coronavirus, consult a healthcare professional such as a doctor or a psychologist or a social worker. The board website will have a list of uh, the mental health agencies in Windsor and Essex County and what services they are providing at this time, how to contact them and what to expect when you contact them. You also could search uh, for a psychologist in this area by going on the College of Psychologists of Ontario website at cpo.on.ca uh, and search this area. They have a search for uh, members which will, will let you know who in, in the area is able to see children or adolescents uh, and maybe a good first step. Great, those are great resources. So just to sum up, this is a difficult time for all of us. Keep doing the best you can. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your kids, and thank you for listening. <laughs>